welcome on ladies I just had a, like a burst of excitement because I realized that the two faces on here a lot of you women that are in a fair dynamics at the moment and going through an experience of infidelity uh, might have seen both of our faces but on separate videos so it's, it's it's exciting to come together and be able to do an interview together um, so today I have a beautiful guest by the name of Stacy. welcome on Hi, welcome everybody. Today, so good to be here, Kate. Oh, I, I agree. And I'm so excited to jump into today's video, which we're going to be talking about when you are in a experience at, and being unfaithful and how to really navigate that when you are in it. And it can be an extremely confusing time and have a lot of shame and guilt. Um, so Stacey, can you please tell us more before we like get into your story and what you do? Or can you please tell us more about what you do? Well, I'm an infidelity recovery coach and I specialize in helping unfaithful women heal from their affairs. So I really, the majority of my clients come to me when they're still having the affair. Um, so I help them to end that and prevent relapse because it's very important that we jump off of that cycle. It's like a merry-go-round cycle where we're on again, off again, we're taking breaks, we're, you know, we're doing all this, but I can't walk away from you. It's like, it's like that real struggle. So I help them to end that and to prevent future affairs. Even if it's not with the same guy, you know, we want to prevent that, but we also want to look ahead into the future because we have a tendency to blame our surroundings for the reason we're having an affair. And that's, that's, you know, an external vulnerability. That's what caused us to be vulnerable, but that's not the real reason. So I really focus on the next step, which is, okay, we want to completely prevent you from getting back into this maybe five, 10 years down the line. So yeah. yeah, that's what I take them to that, that through. That's a process. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And I have, I have so many questions coming to mind as, as you speak that. So I'm excited to jump right in. So we're going to be doing this video today for women that are in affairs um, and you might be cheating um, and, and really confused on where you're at and how to navigate this. Tell us before we go into some questions that these women will have, probably would have while going through this experience. Can you tell us a bit more about how you got into this field? Well, I had two affairs in my lifetime and I actually married one of my affair partners. So I, you know, long story short, I got married right out of high school, high school sweetheart. It was an extremely toxic marriage. So I decided to have an affair. Um, that went on for a little while and we eventually both of us left our spouses and we got married. So everything was fine, a completely different husband. There wasn't abuse, that kind of thing. Um, we had some kids about maybe about eight years into that marriage, things started going bad, not terrible, but we just wasn't in a good place. We wasn't emotionally connected. We wasn't bonded. I was really afraid of um, being alone. I felt rejected by my husband. I said, you know, I would just think all the time, he doesn't love me. He doesn't pay attention to me. He, you know, if you love somebody, you want to spend time with them. Um, so that's kind of where my mindset was. And there was, um, there was a guy, he had, uh, I had been knowing him for a couple of years, but for some reason, a few months before we actually kicked things up, he started flirting with me more. And I remember one day for me, I started thinking, okay, this is it. We went on vacation and he stayed in the condo the whole trip and me and our kids stayed on the beach. And I'm like, that's it. I'm going to be alone when I, when these kids grow up and I'm going to be married and he's going to be a stranger. That's it. I'm done. When this guy flirts with me again, I'm going to flirt back because I will not spend my life alone. So you know, sure enough, went back, had an appointment. He flirted with me. I opened the door. We started about a year and a, a year, almost a year, you could say of an affair. Um, and then I ended it and recovery for me was a nightmare. It was literally a beast. I struggled for three to four years trying to get over him. Now he wasn't in my life, but he was in my head and he was still in my heart. So grief just wouldn't let go. 
Um, and, you know, I remember I was on the way to the hospital one night because I was having severe panic attacks from the grief and I really didn't know what it was from. And I remember thinking, I think I'm about to lose my mind, you know, cause I was really having that emotional breakdown. Um, the doctors put me on medication and I, I started to feel better. Like I started, you know, to get my bearings and I started, like, I really started honing in on my faith. Um, I'm a Christian. So I was going to church. I'm like, I, I'm desperate at this point because I'm in pain and I can't function. Um, and that's just when I like I saw a turnaround, like, OK, now I'm starting to see why I'm here. Now I'm starting to see I don't have to be in this that long. And I remember I was praying one day and God had spoke to me and said, there are other women hurting and I want you to help them. You know, so I want you to go to school to be a coach. And I thought, hmm, yeah everybody's going to know what I did. I'm like, this is going to be so public if I do this, but the pain that I went through in the isolation, because they didn't, I didn't have any help and therapist. I mean, you may have ran into this yourself. Therapists are really good, but they're not great with the unfaithful because if they haven't had the affair, they don't know how to help us because they don't know those, you know, some of those questions we go mm -hmm. through or they don't know what's going on. So I had that and I knew that other women were probably suffering from the same thing and I didn't want them to be alone. So my heart was, okay, you know, I felt like God had showed me how to get out of this and how to heal, like completely heal, not just, okay, I'm over you. That's it. You know, yeah, but to, out of mind. yeah, to say, Hey, I'm the common denominator. Like, yeah, I had a bad first marriage, but I'm the one that cheated twice. So yeah. what's wrong? So that's kind of like, I started, you know, digging into that. And then when I was completely healed, I feel like I'm like, yeah, I just have to offer myself to other women and get them out, like help them come out of this because it's, it's a nightmare, but it's wrapped in a present, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, when we see it, it's, oh my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Like I feel alive again, you know, like wow, I haven't had my needs met in so long. It's so, it, it's like a shiny package, right? And then Absolutely. when we open it, it's, it's like you're eating dirt or something. It's, it's just a nightmare, <laughs> you know? That explains it so well. It's so confusing to be able to experience both of those intense emotions in the same experience. So tell us, what do you feel, like, what did you make this experience mean while you're going through it? Um, I turned it into a growing experience where I said, you know, I can either sit here, feel sorry for myself. I've ruined my reputation in my hometown and, you know, I'm, I'm just not in a good place. I'm the worst person in the world. You know, I can do all the negative self-talk and condemn myself, or I can say, Hey, what can I learn from this? You know, so I really turned it into a learning experience and a I took the opportunity to grow and say, you know what? I'm not what I've done. So I'm going to learn why I've done it and, you know, not do it again, of course. So get out of this. So that, that's really what I made, how I turned it around for me. And just by saying, what can I learn from this? Because I can't stay in this pain. And even if it is the guilt and the shame, I can't sit in that forever. I can't wear that label forever. Um, because I won't be able to do anything. Society will keep me at the level of my label and I'll never rise above it if I allow them to. So, you know, if they say you're a side chick or, you know, you're all the bad things, you know, the adulterous woman or you're this or you're that. Um, no, that's not me. I did that, but that's not who I am. So I have to get above this. So that's, that's really how I turned it, you know, for me. Beautiful. And I think, so uh, for the women that are listening and are like, yeah, Stacey, I think logically, I think that, and that isn't me. And they can have that positive uh, perspective towards the experience of not shaming themselves or not judging themselves, but then deep down they are. And they feel that. How do you actually move through that guilt and shame that is in locked in your body? Well, you have to learn who you are. So for me, it was more of separating 
who I am as a person from what I do, because we all make mistakes. We all, um, you know, we can find our identity in our jobs in, in being moms in that kind of thing. We can also find our identity in even the bad mistakes that we've made if we're drug addicts or alcoholics or that type of thing. So it's really about finding out who you really are. And if you're a Christian, then you want to find out who God really is, because that is where your stable place is at. You know, it's like people's opinion of me mm. is going to change constantly. And if I allow their opinion of me to be my opinion of me, then I'm going to either be in guilt one day or shame, or I might feel okay the next day. I'm just going to be all over the place. So I have to really ground myself in who God is and who he says I am. And then once I get to that place, then I need to learn how to forgive myself because sometimes we will, I know I did this for a very long time. I wouldn't allow myself to be happy because I felt like I deserved the punishment. I was shameful for what I had done. So I needed to punish myself in some kind of way. So don't be happy or don't receive your husband's love or don't receive, you know, his forgiveness. And I had to stop doing that and say, okay, when's enough enough? Like, when are you going to say, okay, well, you paid the price long enough. And really the truth is we can't pay the price for that. You know, there's yeah. nothing we can do to make it better or to change the past. I should say it's gone and you can't change it. So that's also when I really learned, what can I learn from this? Mm. You know, I'm going to forgive myself and look at myself as human even though it's a painful thing to hurt people around you, hurt yourself, hurt other families, like, you know, your affair partner's family, that kind of thing. It's painful, but we can't punish ourselves for the rest of our lives. We just cannot do it. We have to offer ourselves that mercy and that grace and use that as a great opportunity to learn about who you are and learn what happened. Because then when you learn that, you can change it, right? If you see something and you become aware of a problem that you didn't know you had, now you have the power to change it and make your life better. Yeah. That, that's where I would start. Yeah. Is there a part of holding on to that guilt and shame, a part of you holding on to the experience? I think so. Depending on where you are in re the recovery process, sometimes holding on to the sadness, um, sometimes holding on to... I need to try to figure him out um, and, the, and the guilt and shame is still a part that's keeping you connected to your affair partner. It's negative, right? It's a negative um, attachment, but nevertheless, it's still an attachment. And we don't, if we, how, depending on how bonded we are to that person, we don't really want to let go. So I would rather hold on to you in a negative way than completely let you go, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So for the women that are listening and that are in an affair dynamic right now and they're like, I can't do this, I shouldn't be doing this, um, and they have that, that desire to break off but they keep going back and they're doing that yo-yoing, how would you help them navigate that so that they can create change that feels in alignment to them for good? Well, I always tell them that when they're struggling to end their affair, their first step is they have to know why they want to do this. Like it's, it's not a time where you're going to consult how you feel. It's a time to consult why you want to do this and to really look and see what's important to you. Like, is this something you want to stay in? Why are you staying stuck in it? What's the benefits of it? It's really what I take them through is like a series of questions that we go through. We, um, we go through some realities of infidelity and I have them look at this, you know, because our eyes are so blinded. It's like a veil comes over our face when we're with the affair partner mm -hmm. and we don't see everything clearly. So just lining up some truths and things like that is really what I take them through. So your first step you don't have to necessarily say, okay, yeah, I'm totally in love with my husband, or if you, you know, are married or not married, I, you know, you don't have to be there. You just have to be in the place where you recognize that this is not going to stop and it's not going to get better. 
because yeah. sometimes when we stay in that on again, off again for both partners, it's them trying to find that connection they had when the affair first started and they can't find it. So they keep trying to reach back to that place and it's not there. So it's just creating more pain as the cycle breaks and gets back. You know, it's just, it's just more pain that they're creating for themselves. So they really have to stop and look at the truth of what's going on. And, you know, we can want something, but we have to be willing. Like I, I can want to end this affair, but if I'm not willing to put in the effort that it's going to take to walk away and get through the withdrawal period, then it's not going to happen. So how do you move from that phase of feeling like I have to, to, I want to, to I am willing and ready? Well, it just depends on them. Everybody's in the, everybody is different that I've noticed. It depends on the severity of the pain in the stage they're at. And, you know, so for my Christian ladies, the guilt will overwhelm them to the point where they just can't take it and it's not pleasurable anymore. Um, For my non-Christian clients, they will say they cannot take the back and forth because there's a weight on them. They feel like they feel that pressure. So there's different, you know, each client I've noticed is different in a sense where it depends on how severe the pain is when they get to me as to whether or not they're ready. Now I've had clients who they were still in the honeymoon phase of it and they didn't really, they just wasn't there yet, but they knew it couldn't continue if that makes sense. Like they were still enjoying the high of it, but they knew it just couldn't continue. Mm -hmm. So then that's just a different process. So basically what I do with my clients is Um, I tailor the program to fit their needs and the stage that they are in. Now, you know, I mean, you know, with working with clients that there's a common thread through all of this, you probably hear the same thing over and over. And maybe you've said that too, you know, because I agree with them. I'm like, yeah, girl, I said that. Yeah. You know, (laughs) I was there, you know. I feel you completely. Yep. I will tell them, I'm like, look, I will tell you what I said, you know, and we'll go into some details and they're just laughing. And I'm like, yeah, I get you. Um, but that's the common stuff that goes around, but everybody's so unique and they're so different. They need something tailored just to them, you know, like this is what you need. So it's different um, for everybody and how I'm going to take them through that process. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Amazing. Thank you. One question I do have for when you're in the affair dynamic and you're like, I've got to end this. I've got to stop it. How do you navigate, how did you navigate and how do you navigate ending it? Do you tell your husband, what do you do there? Well, you know, my husband found out, um, so I didn't have to, you know, say, Hey, I'm having an affair. He did find out. I did deny it in the beginning. Um, so I had to, you know, disclose a lot of information, you know, once it was found out, but you know, when you're when you're there and you're trying to navigate it, you really want to think about, you want to think and ask yourself, it's, you know, if you're worried about getting caught, if that's something, it's not a question of when it or if it's more like, when is this going to come out? Because I've noticed that most of them come out. Um, And as for if they should tell or not, that's always something I tell them, you have to decide that on your own. Um, what you can live with. If the spouse doesn't know, it has to come from you. It ha- the decision has to come from you. And that, that's something also for them to decide to end the affair. That decision has to come from within because if they're forced to end the affair, it's not going to be a sustainable decision. You know, like if someone's making you do something, it's not going to last very long, that decision. Like I'm going to follow the rules, but only for so long, you know, but if it's coming from me, then, um, more than likely I I will stay true to it, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. So for the, for the women that are in this situation and they're wondering, should I leave my husband for my, my affair partner? Do I, do I love my husband or has that like, 
ship sailed? Is that gone? Is that the chapter that has closed? Or should I put more energy into it and try to re-spark it? Or do I leave? What, what, how do you help women navigate that experience of confusion of who, which person to choose? Well, I always tell them that don't make any hasty decisions in the beginning. Um, and be careful if you're going to make that decision while you're still in the affair, because like I talked about that veil that comes over you, it yeah. really clouds your vision. And I really thought I didn't love my husband anymore. Like I would have bet on all the money I had. I'm like, nope, I don't love you anymore. And, um, you know, so I, just to be completely honest, I went to bed one day, I had a dream that he died. I woke up in a panic and I'm like, where did this come from? You know, like I know some kind, sometimes dreams can affect us, you know? So I waited a few days and I'm like, oh my God, do I still love this man? And it was at that moment where I'm like, I can't live in regret. Like if I still love my husband, I need to see if I can fix that, if that can work. So you really want to be careful when you're making decisions in the affair. It's always, always best to be out of the affair before you make any kind of life-changing decisions. Because honestly, chemically, the whole nine yards, like our brains, we are just not thinking clearly. Like we, when we're entering into an affair and we've been there, our emotional side of our brain, that's what's working. It's not logic. Um, therefore, we're not going to be able to make 100% of the right decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, the way we are with our affair partner, the falling in love with our affair partner, that kind of thing, we're not going to see our husband as a hero anymore. We're not going to see our past. We will rewrite our past with him. Whereas we could have been in love with him when we married them 20, 30 years ago. And now we've lost that, but that's just because of the stages of love, you know, the stages of what relationships goes through. We don't know that because we're not really taught that love is going to change like the emotional side of love is going to change over time yeah. um so it's it's be careful because i've seen women make some terrible mistakes where they um have left their husband got with their affair partner that lasted two months the affair partner leaves the husband has already moved on and now the woman is so broken because she realizes that she should have never left her husband so you always want to proceed with caution um, in that case. You know, it's, it's not, you know, marrying your affair partner, which I have a video coming out about that, um, is not always what you think it's going to be. Yeah. So just, just proceed with caution. And I, I always recommend go the no contact with your affair partner. Like go three months without talking to him and reevaluate the situation with your husband and see if, if there's some differences. Okay, beautiful. I, I love that perspective. Um, can I ask you, what is the biggest things that went in your business with the clients that you have? What is the biggest themes that they need help with or that they're seeking? Um, I think it's different for all of them. They need, you know, the main thing I see is we need to end the affair. You know, like we need to get out of the affair um, you know, but you have different, like I said, everybody's in individuals and they all have different pain points. They have their different aspects of, Hey, I need help more with this, but I mean, it's infidelity in general, right? You know, so that that's what I work in. Yeah. So it all has something to do with an affair. You're in some stage of recovery, whether you're just ending it or you're trying to end it or something like that. So I see a lot of mixture of, I need to end it. I need to heal from it. I need to grow. So, yeah, you know, it, it's just, Everybody to me, it's all the me. same. Yep, yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. Can I ask you for people that have cheated and they are choosing to be with their affair partner moving forward, do, how, how do they navigate if they feel like down the track, their partner might fear that they'll cheat again. Yep, that, that's a huge thing. And I always say, if you have decided to get with your affair partner, you guys are going to be together. 
it is best to start doing some inner work. Do the inner healing on yourself and recognize infidelity for what it is, which it's just a fruit of a deeper problem. You know, yeah. it's like we have that once a cheater, always a cheater. And I don't like that phrase, yeah, yeah. but I've learned why they have that phrase because people have had multiple affairs. So we can't just stop the behavior and make the promises to ourselves, follow all the trust plans, you know, like this is what you can do to trust me, that kind of thing. We can't just do that. It has to go deeper. So I always tell them, take that time to work on yourself, both of you, like both of you do that inner work and find out what really caused the affair. That way, when you see that person starting to change and you start communicating with each other, like, I think this is why I did it. And this might be why she did it, you know, that kind of thing. Then the trust starts to get better in a sense where, oh, I realized that you were broken. Like there was something deeper inside of you going on than other than, oh, my husband ignored me or, you know, my husband, we don't have that attachment anymore. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I tell them. Work on yourself 100%. What's a little breakthrough that you had of awareness that you're like, oh my gosh, this is clicking. I, I didn't know this about myself and this makes so much sense for the way I show up for myself. Um, I didn't know, for me, I didn't know I was so afraid of being alone. Yeah. Like I had no idea that, I mean, I knew, I heard myself saying, hey, I don't want to be alone because I wanted a partner, you know, that's why I got married. And I, I thought that was valid, a valid reason. And it is, but for me, it was deeper. It was abandonment issues. So that was the one thing that I learned about myself that I, I didn't really know I had abandonment issues, but with those issues comes fear. And the fear caused me to see like everything my husband was doing in a negative perspective, almost like a, mm -hmm like a self-fulfilling prophecy, because if I'm thinking everybody's going to leave me, then when my husband does something that, you know, really he's not going to leave me, I might read it as that. I might judge what he's doing as he doesn't love me. He's going to leave me. And then I'm going to freak out, you know, yeah, then I'm yeah, like, yeah. okay, I got to go into self-preservation mode, that kind of thing. And that was huge for me. That was um, a turning moment when I realized that about myself and I could start going back into my past and seeing how I misinterpreted a lot of things that happened between my husband and I, um, as I thought it was the end of our marriage. And it really wasn't, it was just my fear talking, you know, like me going into a survival mode. So yeah, that, that's been a breakthrough for me. I, I'm not, I don't behave that way anymore. It's, um, it's so much better, but because I've learned and I've healed it, um, I'm more content. Like, yeah you know, if we have an argument or something like that, it doesn't, it doesn't disturb me, ideas. you know? Yeah, it doesn't. I'm good. So um, yeah, I was grateful for that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If we have abandonment fears, we are going to show up completely different for the people in our life and for, for ourselves massively. And I think a lot of women will be able to relate here. If you do have a big fear of abandonment deep down, and you are holding on to these, this relationship or these relate this this dynamic, whatever your dynamic is that you're. If you're listening here, how do we dissolve those fears so that we can make decisions for ourselves that are really in alignment for us moving forward, not based out of the fear of being abandoned? Right. You have to ask yourself, what is reality? Like what's really going on? I would have to stop. And for a while I would have to tell myself, okay, you got an argument with your husband. It's not that he doesn't love you. So I would have to bring my thoughts back into reality because the fear wants to take them into the future, into the, what if he leaves me? What if I'm left alone? You know, so the anxiety, it pushes me towards the future. And I have to constantly you know, when you're reprogramming your brain, that's when the effort comes in and it's the hardest, but you have to bring it back to the reality. Okay. The reality is this is a fear. The reality is, okay. If he left you, it's okay. God will never leave you. You will survive. It's the cons. It's the reassuring that child in you 
that you're okay, that you're going to make it, that you don't have to respond in a self-preservation response where you okay, you know, it's like, hey, you're, you're good. You can be okay in this. Um, and I just did that. I, you know, I'm like, okay, I just need to become more secure and I have to change my self-talk. Like, what am I saying to myself? You know, how am I reading this? Is this really true? You know, that kind of thing. And standing up for, for myself really, you know, like giving voice to those fears, like talking to my husband about it. Like, this is what I'm afraid of. This is what's going on, you know, and him coming back. Okay. It's okay. Calm down. And yeah. really just learning to be content with myself because honestly, the fear of abandonment, abandonment really is, I'm just afraid to be with myself. Yeah. You know, because if you have to constantly have someone with you, then why can't you be alone? So that's when it's like, okay, it's now it's time to find out, do I not like myself? You know, is that why I don't want to be alone? Yeah. Am I not, do I not approve of myself? Do I feel rejected? Yeah. And I mean, of course we can go deeper, like, okay, you know, how, did you feel like you were a failure? How was you raised? You know, that kind of thing. But yeah. the bottom line, the fear of abandonment is we're afraid to be alone with ourselves. Mm, I love that. For the people that have, say, just ended the affair or their marriage has just ended, essentially the relationships they are going through has just ended and they feel completely alone. The fear of abandonment often gets triggered, blown out of the water, and it's so loud. How do we come back down to ourselves and make sure we don't give in to say we're doing no contact and giving in to contacting them? Well, when you want to prevent no, like reconnecting with them and, you know, you want to always remind yourself why you are not with them, why you went no contact, you yeah. know, it, you're going to have those urges. You're going to have those fears, but you have to work on yourself. You have to go below this, below what you see to, you know, we have to get deep. Like I said, am I afraid to be alone with me? Like once we start growing and healing ourselves, then we will become more stable and more content and we won't need that situation. So you always want to come back to why am I really doing this? I might be triggered in a moment, but triggers pass. I can manage triggers. I can work through them. I might have a memory, but a memory I can get past that too. It's just, that's what it is, is a memory. It's, it's, you know, in the past, I need to just bring myself back. It's always back to the future, to the reality of what's going on now. This is why I'm not in the affair. This is why this isn't going to work. You know, that kind of thing. You just bring yourself back to reality and say, okay, I'm not going to give in. Yeah. I love that. Beautiful. And it takes, it takes time um, and practice. I, before we wrap this up, can you tell us more about what you offer, what you do, how we can contact you? Absolutely. So I have a YouTube channel. I'm a coach. Um, so I'm certified life coach and solution focused coach. So we're going to get to a solution. We're going to get you out. That's, I mean, that's the goal is we're, you know, we're setting goals and we're getting there and we're healing. So I have a YouTube channel. I have a website. Um, I have links to my calendar on both. You can contact me through email on my website. Um, it's moderndayeve.com. And basically what I do is I have, um, like I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients. We go through the withdrawal phase, which is about the three, about three months is when it's the worst. So I just take them through it. So we, um, I always tell them, I cannot take away your pain hundred percent. It's just something that comes, unfortunately for us who've had an affair, it comes with the territory. But what I want to do is help you to manage the pain and move through it. So we don't want to get stuck because there's many roadblocks that we come across in that withdrawal phase. Like there's things that can keep us stuck and we can get on the merry-go-round. So my job is to help you manage that and move through it because when you can get past that withdrawal phase that you know first three months you have a better chance of success where now I'm thinking clearly now we might not get back together and now and I'm okay with that you know that kind of thing so and then the next phase is we start working on growth like why did I really do this like I don't want to have another affair in my lifetime I want to prevent this. So then we move on to the second part, um, which is really growing 
and transforming and healing all those deep inner wounds. And we do it one-on-one. I love it. Beautiful. A safe container, which is what all of the women here are often craving is just to be heard, if I can get my word out, (laughs) words out, uh, heard, seen and understood. So um, thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. If awesome. you were to share something to end this interview with women that are cheating, going through infidelity, what, what would you offer? Um, you mean words of inspiration? Kind of- uh, uh, if you just wanted to close it with something, is there something that feel, you feel has left unsaid? Yes. I would love to tell you that you are worth so much more than what you're settling for. And if you feel like you have become this affair, meaning that I might as well do it because this is who I am, I want you to remember that you are not what you do, that your past mistakes do not have to define your future, Um, that you can be free from this, you can heal, you can live without this person, even if it seems like you cannot live without them right now, you can, trust me, I've been there. There's healing on the other side of this and there's growth and transformation on the other side. Just keep going. You deserve more. That's, that's what I would say. You deserve more. I don't care what anybody says about what's going on. You deserve to be happy. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. I remember when I was personally in my fair experience, those words of you deserve more than what you're settling for oh my gosh, I said it every day on on journals and everything. It was just like, what are you settling for? And but you're so tied in it. So uh, I'm so grateful for you helping women go through that journey and be able to come out the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Stacey, for joining on. Um, Take care. You're welcome. Bye-bye, guys.